Hey campers, we're out here in the garage, getting a couple things we need to do what we're gonna do. Multimeter, wire strippers, crimp on connector set, and my crimp on crimper tool that I like versus the cheap ones. And a battery, but we're not taking that one. I'm gonna take this one, mostly because it's smaller. It does have a go handle, but of course, mostly because it's been set on boil all day. Let's go. Today on We Love to Camp, we are going to redo what I did before. Those blue LED lights that I put on the top of our camper, that was a fail. And now we're going over what we need to do to make it a win. So follow along. This is going to be a real cool project. Previously on here, we changed out the LED lights on the top of the camper. Now, this is a common problem with a lot of campers. I know for a fact that the Sunset Trail campers are always burning up those LED lights. And I hear other people talk about it too. So this is something that is going to be beneficial to a lot of people. Like I said, I did it wrong. I tried to, I went way cheap before. Cheaper than cheap. You know, I tried fixing it for free. It worked, but it was still a fail. The lights were entirely too bright to be used anywhere without being obnoxious. Even set it on the thumbnail, obnoxiously bright. So what I've done is I've gone to eBay and I picked something up. Now this is going to be cool because of a couple of things. Here, let's first, let's open up this box. Un uninspected, I haven't opened it up yet. So we got the power adapter. We've got the power plug. Some of you already picked up on this. This is supposed to be a 12 volt thing. I've mentioned this before. You've got your 115 volt system, which is your household current. It's everything that you plug in. That's your 115. That's not your automotive type circuit. Automotive type circuit all goes back to here. It all goes to the battery and 12 volt DC is different than 115 AC. That's direct current and alternating current. I don't know a whole lot about AC, but I do know enough to get a few things done, and I know DC fairly well. This is going to be interesting. I'm pretty sure I already know how this is going to work, and it is going to work. Just your regular old LED. When you're shopping for LEDs, you'll find two different types. There's more than two, but you'll find two different types as far as these rolls of taped, sticky tape on ones. I'm looking, this drawing I'm about to do, it's like you're looking in the end of the strip. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit for effect. But as you see here, you've got the tape, which has your circuit board. And then you got your little tiny LED. That's the actual light emitting diode. And when you're looking down at it, it's just the square piece. The ones that work for outdoor use have a dome of rubber that covers the whole thing. So this is for indoor use only. And that is for indoor or outdoor use. That's a waterproof rubber shield. That's the main difference between indoor, outdoor and indoor. This one, I've already verified, both from the eBay seller's description and from checking it out now, this is an indoor-outdoor piece. The seller said that it was a 12-volt negative ground unit. Now what you need to do is find out on here, right there. There you go, output 12 volt. Now something else you want to look at, this is very important. 
you see the dot with the circle and then the plus and the minus what those are doing they're telling you the polarity go back to the grease board and now the power the plus is the power that's positive and then the negative is well the minus sign is the negative or the return now this is kind of what it does on here like I said I don't think it showed up on the video so what this means is that when it comes to the plug this plug right here which is the output from that box the inside of this plug is positive it's got the hole and then it says plus positive then it has this with a line that says negative that's what it says right on here now the polarity is very important they're not all going to be like this. Sometimes it will be positive inside. Sometimes it will be negative inside. And also, like I've mentioned before, with LED lights, the, they are polarity sensitive. If you flip-flop positive or negative, it's not going to work. Your old-school incandescent bulbs, they'll work either way, but not digital lights. Once there's no question if this is still plugged in, you can just go ahead and snip it. You don't need this two points here's where things get fun there's going to be a couple different ways to do this and I'm not I don't know exactly how it's going to go until we have the camper here so I want this to be as long as possible in reality I can hook to this and make it even longer so what I'd like to do for those of, for those of you that remember the last video up on the top of the camper there's a hole coming out the fiberglass that the wires come out and it goes straight to the strip so what i want to do is i want to have this inside the camper inside the wall so this is the front of the camper and then you got the little hole for the wires to come out i want that just sticking out just like that and then the wires going to the led that way i can stand outside and aim at the front of the camper and adjust the lights. That way, in theory, you could even go in the tow rig and have the kid in the back seat playing with the light switch. In theory. Responsible kids only. So what I need, the switch is down in the compartment, the storage compartment, the pass-through. The wire comes down that front wall and there's a switch down there. That's all I need to hook to. But first, we're gonna try and test it out. Even though I've already cut it up, I wanna make sure this is gonna work. This is where the multimeter comes in, the crimper tool. So you wanna very carefully cut the outer piece of rubber. If you're using a razor knife, you got to be very careful because this will just slice you open before you even know that it slipped. And what I do is I just roll it across the blade. I don't know if you saw what I was doing, but I was just rolling it like that with my thumb over it ever so lightly. And then never use your teeth as tools. For most of your automotive mechanics, you always know that Red is positive and black is negative. That's not always the case once you get away from a car. In industrial stuff, white is ground and black is positive. Confusing, isn't it? Our first camper was like that, hooking to the battery. We had a white and a black cable going to the battery. And luckily I knew what was going on, but a lot of people, they don't like that. They complain about it. They don't get it because black and red is what all they know. Now I'm willing to bet that this one is going to be your regular traditional automotive. Black and red, ground and power. Now if you remember, looking at this, <clears throat> at the schematic, it has the center being positive so now i grab this and i told you i'm going to show you guys how to use this thing one day 
put it on that setting. And what it is, basically, that is ohms. That measures resistance. And this measures continuity. It's the same thing. But on this selection, it has a beeper. That's what I'm looking for. Now, see, this way, I don't even have to be able to see this to figure this out. If it beeps, I've got continuity. And here, I'll, show, I'll tell you what that means here in just a second. So I'm going to stick that inside. So I'm testing the inside of the plug. And I'm going to go to the red, which I suspect is going to be the positive. I was right. What this is doing, break it down, it's really basic. This is shooting a little tiny bit of voltage into this red wire. It goes inside through here, and then it comes out, as we just figured out, inside the center. And then I pick up with the other lead, and it reads that little bit of voltage that the red one just shot in. Kicks off the beeper on that. So that tells me that that is, this inside of here has continuity to this red wire. And then just for grins, we're going to go ahead and do the black to the outside. There we go. I'm on the black wire, and I'm on the outside there. We're almost done with this. Being that this is an old battery, even though I had it set on boil for a while, I'm going to put it on this selection. And on mine, it actually says VDC, Volts Direct Current. Not all of them will do that, but this means direct current, that means alternating current. And on this one, oh, sorry, on this one, it will actually say AC. But we're working on an automotive circuit. Since this is an old battery, I wanna go ahead and make sure that it's got some power in it. It should. There we go, 12.87, beautiful. Since these don't really, this is just for testing purposes. Whoa. Okay, now hold on. So what I've done here, this is a GM side post battery. And I took a bolt, a 3 8 bolt, and I cut the head off of it. And I run this bolt down in there. Well, that one's stuck in the battery and this one's stuck in the bolt. But see right here. It's nothing but a threaded bolt. And then I have these. These are off of a freight liner, but you can use just a nut if you want. And then I strip all the rubber off of the GM cable, and it's just a large washer with a hole in it. And you just put it on here, spin this down on there, and you have all the advantage of a side post battery without the disadvantage of that tiny 5 16 head bolt. Is it five millimeter or is it eight millimeter? I can't remember, it's been a while. But since this is just for testing purposes, I'm not too worried about this being perfect. <coughs> Don't use your teeth as tools. Now what I just did here is I ripped off the terminal insulation. The yellow piece here, that yellow piece of plastic, I just ripped it off. So I have a bare plastic. If this was going into the vehicle, I would use heat shrink, which this is just plastic. You heat it up and it shrinks down, just as like the name implies. And you get a airtight, watertight seal. We'll go over this later. The way I'm doing this is way wrong right now. Way wrong. If I'm right, I can hook this up to the battery, plug this in to that, plug that into this, and we're going to get light. And if I'm wrong, I just wasted seven bucks. Anybody want to take bets as to what's going to happen? I say it's going to work. Here we 
go. Everything works. I don't know if I can do it on this. I'm going to have to check the directions. Remember, like we always say here, the directions are nothing but another man's opinion. But I'm going to have to check and see if I can program these lights. Because what would be really cool is if 4th of July weekend, if I can't have it fading between red, white, and blue while we're at the campgrounds. Not on the road. Blue lights, forward facing, that's a ticket in all 50 states. But if I can go red, white, blue while we're in the campgrounds, that would be sweet. That would be patriotic or whatever. And then for Christmas, for Christmas in July, if I could get it to go from red to green back and forth. And for Halloween, I could go from orange to purple. So this is going to work. My idea is going to work beautifully. And again, I can dim it if I want. There it is, blue. The deeper the blue, the better. That's the blue that I like. That's the blue that's on the front of everybody's travel trailers. And some people like it like that. I don't. I just like it. I like it as a color, as a light to see or a light to look at, not something to blind everybody else with. So, this is a win. Now all I gotta do is get the camper here and run the wires, like I said, and that should be easy. So, we will go over that at a later date. A few moments later. Now that I've got those lights all sorted out, mostly sorted out, let's move on to the next project. Just got this in the mail today something I've been considering doing for a while. Mainly, back in the bunk room, my son has no USBs, no 12 volts, no 110 outlets, nothing up in his bed. So he, basically he can't charge his phone up there. So if he wants to get to his phone or if his alarm is going off, because we'll camp through the week sometimes during the summer, um, he has to jump out to turn off his alarm. So I started thinking about what can I do to fix that. And I found these on eBay really cheap. USB surface mount with plug, with cover. And all you got to do is drill a hole. It's going to be a big hole. That big. Drill a hole and run some wires to the back of this. Two prongs, one positive, one negative, 12 volt. I've got the spade connectors already hooked up on here. Now, let me see here. Brown is positive. It's even marked on the back, positive and negative. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah, right there. There's a positive on the top one, and you can see a negative on the bottom one. So I plug that in, and then I plug in the ground, and it lights up too, because we all love things that light up. I know I do. I got a loose connection. Stay there. And then it's got this rubber cap so that if you don't want to look at that blue light anymore, you just cover it up and the blue light's gone. It also helps keep with moisture out. I wouldn't call it waterproof, but it would definitely keep water resistant. All right, plug that in. Where's my phone? Here it is. There we go. It's charging. These are going to be really easy. Basically run a 12 volt wire and a ground wire to wherever you want this. One's going to go on the top bunk in the bunkhouse, the one over the TV. Then I'm probably going to put one out in the outside kitchen. And third one I'll probably put somewhere around the dinette. I don't know if I'll put it in the wall beside the dinette or back in that bookshelf over there where the furnace is. 
but something in that area so that we could charge iPads or or phones, you know, whatever. But that way it's convenient. You don't have to go back to a bedroom to charge and it just works. And these were cheap. I can't remember how much, but they were cheap. I'll post something right about here and uh, it's going to be easy. So again, come spring, we'll go over the installation. It's, it's not going to be difficult. The hardest part is going to be running wires where nobody can see them. That's the hardest part. And that's not hard at all. That's it for this week. And uh, stop by the Facebook page. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, all that happy stuff. And we'll see you next week. Or we'll see you at the campgrounds. Mm -hmm.